Hey guys, Kyloddl here, and um, last night we got a little bit of info regarding Limbus Company, namely the identity info for the new Rose Spanner Workshop Fixer Gregor and the Lobotomy Ego Sunshower Heathcliff, and we also got the patch notes for the 1.11.0 update coming out this week. In the, pa in the patch notes, there's actually a fairly interesting new major mechanic being introduced. Otherwise, there's not too much, but anyways, let's get started with the Rose Banner Workshop Fixer, Gregor. Now, looking at Rose Banner Workshop Fixer, Gregor, he is a charge unit with a major focus on rupture and a minor focus on tremor. In fact, if we look at his charge, his primary and secondary skills, he gains charge count on use. Now this is noteworthy because a lot of units gain charge count either on hit or on heads hit or on tails hit, something like that. Which means that often you just won't gain the charge count because usually it's the weaker attacks that give you charge, so you'll often just lose and not get to hit them. But the fact that he gains the charge count on use makes this a pretty solid way of gaining charge count. Now his only way of spending charge count is with his tier three, and he can spend charge and he spends all his charge count to inflict the same amount of rupture count with the tier three. Which makes me think that the charge count from his first two skills is going to be pretty minor. Because of the fact you're going to be guaranteed to get them if you use the first two, it'll be pretty consistent. Now that we've gotten that out of the way, let's actually hop into the skill by skill analysis. Starting with his skill 1, Rev Up. Now this is a gluttony slash skill with two coins. On use you gain charge count, and on hit with the second coin you inflict rupture. Nothing too noteworthy, just kind of like a minor skill one. Just inflict a little bit of rupture and gain charge count. Pretty common of charge units to just have a pretty mess skill one. And moving on to his skill two, on use to gain charge count again, yes, this is a one coin envy skill, and it's pierce, and its name is Grease Chains. Now on use, it's you gain charge count similar to the skill one. And on hit with the coin, you inflict both Tremor Count and Rupture Count. Now this is the only way that um, this identity actually inflicts Tremor. So it's, and even then it's only Tremor Count, so it's definitely supposed to be more so to support Tremor units, to support the other Rose Banner Workshop units. They kind of seem to like go all hand in hand. And of course, inflicting Rupture Count, always nice, there is not nearly enough Rupture Count stuff in this game. But as far as getting Rupture Count goes, I think it's a good time to look at his third skill, Let's Grind Him, a 3 coin Gloom Slash skill. Now with the first coin, on hit it bursts Tremor and then reduces Tremor. Now it says it reduces Tremor, and it doesn't say that it reduces Tremor Count, which is what the other Rose Banner Workshop fixers did. Which is very interesting, because I checked it, and it actually is different wording. So it is very possible that this unit actually reduces the Tremor potency, and not the Tremor count when he bursts Tremor. Now, at the same time on the first coin, it'll spend charge count to inflict the same amount of rupture count. This makes it sound like it'll spend all his charge, but it might just mean spend charge count up to, say, a max of 5 and inflict the same amount of rupture count. We don't know for sure yet. And then the second and third coins have the exact same benefit, being on hit they inflict rupture and they deal bonus damage against staggered targets, which of course fits well with the fact that it is a burst tremor skill with the first coin, so a lot of the times it will be enough to bring someone into the stagger range. Now this is a very nice skill as far as I know. Now we're not aware how strong this amount of rupture count infliction is going to be, and any way to inflict a lot of rupture count can be very dangerous because there's a lot of ways to build up rupture count fast, namely uh, Branch from the Tree of Knowledge from Sinclair and LCCB Ishmael's secondary skill being very good um, rupture inflictors. But once again, it's probably going to have limits on it. 
if it just straight up spends all his charge count in order to inflict that much rupture count, that could be insane. Especially considering, a big thing I'm noticing with this unit is it doesn't seem to have that much charge gain, most likely. I think the primary and secondary are going to be like 2, 3, 4 charge, something around that ballpark. So I, th I think that big, a big chunk of Gregor's charge is going to come from his AEDD ego, his electric centipede ego, which I believe is most likely going to come in this same update. Now moving on to his defensive skill, he's just got a guard, nothing too special there, which is pretty much the norm for two-star units, just kind of a generic defense. And looking at his passives, for his normal passive he's got Sawblade fired up, which just inflicts more remor rupture to targets with Tremor. Nothing too noteworthy, but it fits well with the entire gimmick of Rose Banner Gregor and how it seems to be all about inflicting rupture in um, combination with the Tremor gain from the other two workshop fixers from Rose Banner. And now for support passive, Sawblade Maintenance. One ally with the lowest speed inflicts more rupture to targets with Tremor. So basically the exact same thing as normal one, except a, given to the ally with the lowest speed when it triggers. Nothing too noteworthy as far as the passives go, nothing charge related, just more rupture stuff alongside the minor tremor. But I think that's all to say about this unit. Overall, could be a decent unit. Once again, there's not enough like rupture stuff in the game right now to determine for sure. Because the only like really decent ruptured thing was the one ego gift in um, the Hell's Chicken hard or Hell's Chicken dungeons, but even then, that was one that was unbalanced because whenever you inflict rupture, it just increased rupture count by five and just meant kind of insane damage. I don't think we'll be able to reach anything like that with the actual game. But m let's move on to the three star of this banner: Lobotomy Ego Sun Shower Heathcliff. <laughs> Now the first thing you'll notice about this unit is the fact that all three of his skills have in additional things on Tails hit. Now this and the actual specifics to this identity makes me pretty certain that these are all going to be negative coins, similar to that of Crips and Claire. Now, this unit has minor focus on rupture, but his main focus is self-sinking and self-sanity loss, which of course fits well with the idea of negative coins. Looking at his primary skill, Umbrella Thwack, a three-coin blunt envy skill, on use it gives Heathcliff some sinking count, and on hit with the third coin, it'll inflict sinking and sinking count on the target. Now, another thing to note about this is the fact this is the third identity in the game to have a three coin skill one. The only other two are Base Otis and Rabbit Heathcliff, which means it's probably going to be a pretty good primary skill. Especially since gaining sinking count sounds like it could be very beneficial given some of his later things. Now moving on to his second skill, um, Puddle Stomp. <laughs> Rather silly name. A lot of these have silly names, which kind of contradicts this whole very gloomy nature of the ego, but I think that fits very well. But yeah, Puddle Stomp, Gloom, 4 coin blunt skill, and has the general effect of when below negative 15 SP, the skill gains final power. Now, the first two coins have the exact same effect, being on Tails hit, they inflict rupture, but the fourth coin can spend sinking from... It's, it just says spend sinking, I believe that'll mean spend sinking on Heathcliff himself to deal more damage, and on Tails hit, it's a burst tremor. Now, there's literally no other Tremor on this unit, this is just a little bonus thing in case you pair it with Tremor units, which I feel like is going to be pretty likely, as it seems like it's going to be... It seems like the new units are going to pair pretty well together. But yeah, and as far as his tertiary skill goes, spread out, a 3-coin Sloth Pierce skill. 
On use, it'll just straight up give sinking and sinking count to Heathcliff. And with the first coin on Tails, it inflicts Paralysis next turn, which is very nice. And the third coin inflicts Rupture, and on Tails, inflicts Fragile next turn. Now, this sounds like it'll be pretty good. Inflicting both Paralysis and Fragile to a target next turn means that they're both going to take more damage and they're going to roll worse. So it'll be very good at preparing a target to be beaten ruthlessly the following turn. Now, as far as Heathcliff's defense skill goes, this is pretty interesting because it is a Wrath counter skill. It's a Pierce attack with two coins. Now, this is the first counter we've had with more than one coin, which is very interesting. I assume that's going to be more commonplace going forwards, but it's but this effect is on use gain sinking. Now, because it's on use and not on turn start, it's only if it actually well uses the counter. So if he actually gets attacked and then gets a chance to use it, aka gets attacked and doesn't get staggered by it. So it gains sinking on use. On tails hit with the first coin, it is a gain paralysis next turn, which is actually a gimmick that I've been thinking about for a pretty long time would work well because Heathcliff gives himself Paralysis, and because he's got all negative coins, Paralysis is insanely good, because it means no matter whether or not he gets heads or tails, he'll have the exact same base power, which of course is the strongest possible roll for his coins. And the second coin just inflicts Sinking and Rupture on hit. Very strong counter skill. Of course, we're going to have to see how bulky this unit is to see how useful counter skill is going to be, because the counter skill really doesn't help if it's on a unit that will just get staggered or get killed by attacks before it gets the chance to use it. Now, this unit has a pretty big passive, Reign of Tears. At the start of the combat phase, spend a sinking count and lose SP by the current amount of sinking. Now, it doesn't say how much sinking count it is. It'll probably be... Well, it'll depend on the actual unit itself. I don't think it's going to be all sinking count. It's probably going to max at a certain amount or just spend a set amount if possible. And before being hit by an attack, gain protection equal to this unit's sinking, and when hit, gain blunt damage up next turn. So this passive basically will just spend sinking count, and just it'll basically just expend the, some of his sinking right away, losing some sinking count in order to lose SP, which is effectively just being hit and triggering the sinking without, well, the downsides of being hit which is pretty nice, and it makes it so that whenever he gets hit by an attack, he'll take less damage from the attack and gain blunt damage up. Now, this synergizes really well with the fact that... So this unit kind of wants to get hit, because whenever he gets hit, he loses a bunch of sanity because of how sinking works, being a SP reduction when hit. And of course, he'll gain a buff from it, blunt damage up next turn. This, of course, does synergize pretty well with his defensive skill, and how it's all about, like, well, him getting hit and gaining benefits from it. So yeah, a lot of interesting stuff. Now for a support passive, Ragged Umbrella. One ally with the least SP loses SP when hit by an attack and gains blunt damage up next turn. Now this has a very obvious, like, purpose. That being, well, Grip Sinclair. I personally, I mean, I personally really like just doing solo, like, Lux Excavation stuff with Grip Sinclair. So just having a passive like this, which basically seems custom made for units like Grip Sinclair. Well, that's pretty nice. Anyways, overall, very interesting unit. Definitely a... Seems like an oddly tanky offensive unit, as far as I can tell, being all about taking hits and then dealing hits back. Anyways, that's all for the new identities. Both look pretty interesting, especially the new Heathcliff. And now let's take a look at the June 8th patch notes. Now, maintenance is just going to be 10 a.m. through 12 p.m. Korean Standard Time, which basically means normal maintenance hours. Not like last week where it was a total of six hours. It's just going to be the normal maintenance hours, whatever that is for you in the time zone. And of course, new target extraction, Technology Liberation Alliance and Rose Spanner Workshop, which of course is going to be extraction rates increased for Lobotomy Ego Heathcliff and Rose Spanner Gregor. Simple enough, it'll last two weeks. Pretty standard. 
And of course, this update's gonna include the second chunk of the main story, Canto 4. Gonna be very exciting. Of course, you're gonna need to have cleared 4 27, which is the final part, the final um, fight of the first part of Canto 4. So make sure you've done everything in Canto 4 before that point. And of course, the pass rewards from level 21 to 40 of the, the season pass will be unlocked. Most likely, this is going to include the two AEDD egos, especially since those two, being Heathcliff and Gregor, just got identities, so it's almost certainly going to be relevant egos to them. Possibly some other ones, but I think the Sunshower ones are probably going to be on the third part of the battle pass. Now, for this new main mechanic, new team setup function, controlled slot additions to dashboard. Now you might be wondering, what does this mean? Well basically, you can set a unit order before you go into fights, and that'll be the order that units gain new skill slots each turn. So for example, in this image here, you can see they've got Gregor selected as their first unit, which means he will be the first person to gain a second skill slot on the second turn, of course. And then following will be Dawn, then Sinclair, and Yisong, and finally Ishmael before finally wrapping around to Gregor. Now this is going to be really nice because it's currently random, so just being able to control this will make your actual abilities in um, normal fights a lot more controllable, being able to choose whatever units you want to get the most focus. And of course, um, change the name. So the name of the thread shop has been changed to thread to shard thread exchange. Simple enough, minor thing. And down adjusted certain skills and skill slot quantity for enemies in ch chapter four, part one. Now I don't know which skills and skill slots they're going to be talking about here. I assume they're probably going to nerf the evasion on the drones because that was a little annoying. And they're possibly going to reduce the amount of skill slots for, say, like, probably the, like, ultimate robots and, the, um, Nico himself. Since they had started with four skill slots and pretty much meant that you were going to be at a disadvantage as far as skill slots go. And, of course, bug fixes improvements. A lot of various things here. I'm not going to go over all of them because it's mostly minor things. Some of which are things I saw... It says Canto 4.5 appeared on the driver's side as if it's available after clearing Canto 4, or after clearing Canto 2, which is a very interesting bug. I haven't seen anything on that, but that sounds silly. Otherwise, um, nice bug fixes. Doesn't sound like it's anything too bad, just kind of minor things across the board, but of course nice that they're fixed. And as usual, when this update comes out, everyone's going to get a nice 300 lunacy. There's one additional thing after this, like that's all the normal stuff, there's one additional thing after this that just says that it's going to be, okay I see, so with the addition of the skill slot gain there's going to be a minor change, so before staggered, panicking, and corroded allies physically could not gain additional skill slots, it would just wait for another turn to be able to randomly select them, but now they'll still get it even if they are staggered, panicked, and corroded. So it does add a little bit of like strategy to it because you got to be careful to not pick units who are going to be well staggered early on because then you're going to be at an even more of a disadvantage than normal. But overall, yeah, nice. Nothing too big in the patch notes. That one minor thing, it's going to be pretty nice, that's for sure. But anyways, I think that's all. This update, I mean, it's going to be good. As always, thank you all for watching and... See you next time. Bye.